Hello and welcome back to Everyman Driver. I'm Dave Erickson. Thanks so much for watching. And if you haven't already, please click on that subscribe button. We upload two to three new videos each and every single week, and I don't want you to miss anything. This week, I've had the pleasure of driving this 2014 Nissan Quest, a modern day minivan that seats seven. And yes, on the outside, it's a big box on wheels, but what it lacks in style, it makes up for in versatility, versatility, and versatility. That's coming up next right here on Everyman Driver. So here under the hood, your stick is actually on the top of the hood, you got to bring it down, it is a 3.5 liter, six cylinder, smooth shifting CVT. Don't let that CVT throw you because it works really well in this vehicle. This kicks out 260 horsepower, 240 pound feet of torque, actually has a 3,500 pound towing capacity. Now fuel economy numbers are right there where they should be for a minivan, 19 city, 25 highway. This week I've been driving quite a bit, I've been taking some road trips, taking people people uh, across town, across state almost, uh, 450 miles. I've been averaging just under 20 miles per gallon, so I'm pretty surprised in that, and I've actually had to fill it up uh, more than once. So that's what you have here under the hood, and the recommended fuel type is regular, uh, unleaded. Let's take a look now at your real-world legroom and headroom here in the middle row seats. I can either close the door using the key fob, there's also a power door button here on the side so you can close it that way. There's also a locking mechanism up by the driver so if you do have kids here in the back seats and you don't want them accidentally hitting this uh, power button to open the sliding doors, you can lock that to keep them safely inside. Now clearly plenty of leg room here in the second row of seats. I think this would be my second choice on where I'd sit if I wasn't driving the vehicle. Captain's chair is back here. Plenty of room, uh, cup holders here in the center. There's even a, another uh, center console with some storage here in the center. There's a, um, a DVD player that pops down. It's an 11 inch screen, which is pretty cool. Two sunroofs, one here and also one here for the uh, front two driver and passenger. Now, as far as my headroom overall, I think uh, it goes without saying that you're not gonna have any issues. Maybe if you have an NBA team back here, you might have some issues, but otherwise, I think it's great. Also, you have the sun shades to keep uh, the people inside cool on both sides. I think that's fantastic. Uh, space behind the driver and passenger for extra magazines. Again, versatility, versatility, versatility. This vehicle seems to have it all. Understandably, I do have the top trim level, so it's fully loaded. You have everything you can possibly think of. I find gaining access to the third row of seats isn't that difficult to figure out, especially if you've done it a few times. There is one lever you pull down here to make the seat go flat, and after that, uh, it's just a matter of stepping over the seat to get back here. And then, you just pull it forward and lock it in place. As you can see from the front of the vehicle, I've got plenty of headroom in the third row of seats as well. So again, this is a huge box and that was one of my first impressions when I saw this vehicle is that there really is no style to it. It's just a big box on wheels, which means you're gonna have some uh, universality to it on the inside. So what the kind of headroom you have in the second row of seats, you'll have in the third row of seats and that holds true back here. Again, more sunshades. I love this feature on both sides. And uh, overall, a pretty comfortable place to be. If I were to slide over, you know, it would be a little bit tight to get three full-size adults back here, but uh, no problem getting the youngsters or some teenagers three across in the back row of seats. And so you have three ways to open the lift gate here of the Quest for 2014. Same for 2013. Uh, there's a button just left of the steering wheel. There's a button here just below the Nissan icon right there, a logo. There's also one here on the key fob. I love to use this one most because I just have to press it and it comes up. Now you have a huge wide opening. There's a big back end to this Quest and inside is where you have all the fun cargo versatility and volume you can think of. Behind this third row of seats you get about 25 cubic feet of volume. Fold those down, which I can do right here. Very simple, very easy to do. Now you're looking at 63 cubic feet of volume. 
Now I've been able to put my full bicycle back here with the front wheel long, which is always the bonus for me because I don't have to disassemble my bike. Now fold those that second row seats down, you're looking at 108 cubic feet of volume. Now here's another little bonus compartment just below the floorboard. You have another huge space to put some valuables, a purse, some other items that you don't want someone to see when you have all this laid out. So you have that right there as well. And you can move these seats up and down by pushing a button here on the side. So you gotta hold it down for it to come up. Same on both sides. Only downside of this is they don't come all the way back. You have to pull it back one more time to get it to a good position for passengers in that third row of seat. But otherwise, I really like how this is. A huge wide opening, a lot of depth, and true cargo capability. And when you're done, press that button, walk away, and say, thank you, Quest. As far as the ride and handling, this is what I've experienced this week. And as always, it's important for you to test drive your vehicles and to get your own opinions. These are just mine, and you may or may not agree with my perspective, but you'll never know until you get behind the wheel. And on that note, let me point out, uh, because a lot of you have asked for me to comment on what it feels like here in the seat, and I'll talk about the driver's seat first of all. It's an eight-way power driver's seat with memory and lumbar support, and I kind of feel like I'm I'm in a miniature RV. That's how much space I feel like I have sitting in this driver's seat. A lot of room on either side for my elbows, so much room for my legs, and as you can see here, tons of headroom. So this spot right here with this leather appointed seats, extremely comfortable. This is one of the most comfortable rides I've been in for a while, and I think that's part of their, um, their point here with the Quest is to make this a comfortable driving experience because it will be a family hauler. Uh, it'll be mom and dad driving this vehicle on road trips around town and you want to make this seat very comfortable. Now my take on how this vehicle drives and handles around town, I think I had the best experience on the highway where this vehicle feels like it floats down the highway almost on a cushion of air. Naturally, it's not so great around corners, but it does have a fantastic turning radius for such a long and large vehicle. As I mentioned under the hood, this has a very responsive and smooth uh, CVT, and I feel like the brakes are really good, as well as the suspension. Again, uh, you're not gonna do any anything extreme in this car, but for what you have to do, getting from point A to point B, uh, there's not much better. Now, I do think you will feel a minor body roll because you do have a taller vehicle, and there will be a fair amount of road noise because you have such a large cabin space in here. But overall, I think you're not gonna worry too much about that because if you do use this as a family hauler, you'll have a lot of voices in here. So I don't think that road noise will get in the way because everyone's gonna be talking. It'll be noisy enough. Now I wanna talk about the center stack. You have a seven inch touchscreen LCD right here, which has your map, your navigation, your infotainment system. Then there's a dial below that so you can navigate through there. There's also a wonderful backup camera with five points of view, four all the way around the vehicle. Then you have a, a separate screen that shows directly behind you. And I find this very advantageous, especially since it's hard to see behind you on such a vehicle that's so long. So that's great. If I have one complaint about this center stack area, it's the shift lever. While it's in the drive position, it does obstruct some of your view of the buttons on the radio. One thing I think is really great, you also have a 12 volt plug-in and a USB port, so if you need to charge something, you can use a cable or you can actually use a plug. 
nothing out of the ordinary for the instrument cluster. Very easy to understand. All the information you want to see is right there. You've got the audio controls on the steering wheel, which is a leather wrapped steering wheel. Finally, I think you can see this in this camera view, but the rear visibility is slightly obstructed by the headrest in the second row of seats right there. So I can't quite see out that smaller window. Otherwise, I think the visibility is just adequate, except for that one little spot there. So the base MSRP range in the 2014 Nissan Quest is between $25,000 and $45,000. And I know $20,000 is a huge gap between the base trim level and the vehicle you see right here, which is fully loaded, but I think you get a lot of bang for your buck if you go for the top tier trim level. And it pains me to say this, but when the time is appropriate and I am looking for a family hauler, I would seriously consider the Nissan Quest. It is worth a look and a test drive. Until next time, I'm Dave Erickson with Everyman Driver. Thanks for watching.